Hello guys, welcome back to A7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily A7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the minimum depth of the beam or the minimum thickness of the beam. The depth of the beam is very important as this is the first step in the designing. First we assume the cross section, the depth and the width of the beam and then we start the designing. So we should be careful that our assumed depth should not be less than the minimum depth of the beam recommended by the different codes. In this lecture, I will mainly focus on the minimum depth requirement by the American Concrete Institute 3.18.14. So, the, all the minimum depth requirement for different types of beam in this lecture will be according to the American Concrete Institute. So, let's consider this is a simply supported beam and this is the length L of the beam. If you look into the cross section of the beam, so this is the height or the thickness of the beam and this is the width or the breadth of the beam. So according to the American Concrete Institute, they recommend to use the minimum depth of the beam of H of L, L by 16. So if we have a length of 30 foot, let's an example that we have a length of 30 foot of simply supported beam then its minimum length should be equal to the 30 divided by 16. Length divided by 16, it comes out to be 1.7 foot. So it means we should not assume less than the 1.87 foot the depth of the beam. So our beam minimum depth should be 1.87 foot. We should always take more than this value. So this is the first step in the designing. And then we can assume the width is the width height to width ratio is generally between 1.5 to 2. This is the general ratio for the height to width of the beam. The width is generally less than the height. Is height is more important in, in the moment of inertia. If we have more height of the beam and then the width, then we have high moment of inertia and we have high bending, bending capacity of the beam. So this is the requirement for the simply supported beam that its length should not be less than the L by 16 for the simply supported case. While if we have the cantilever beam, in this case, if this is, let's suppose the length of the beam. So in this case, the minimum depth of the beam or the thickness of the beam should not be less than the L by 8. So in this case, the height or the thickness or the depth of the beam is higher than the simply supported beam. So we should provide higher depth or the thickness of the beam with the same length of that of the simply supported beam. So this is the requirement for the cantilever beam. For one in continuous beam where the one end is here pen end and the other end you can see here it is passed through different supports. So this beam is called as the one in continuous beam, you see here this beam with the red mark because one end is here supported while the other end of the beam is passed through the number of supports, different supports. So this beam is called the one in continuous beam because one end is being supported and the other beam is also supported but it is passed through different numbers of supports. So in this case for this length of the beam, if I consider this the one end continuous beam, so for this the minimum depth of the beam should be equal to the L divided by 18.5. So if this is the length of the beam, so if we divide it by 18.5, we will get the minimum depth of the beam. We should not provide less than this depth. And also, all these minimum depth are according to the grade steel of 60 KSI. If we have reinforcement bar of 60 grade, then we can use all these formulas. Similarly, for both in continuous beam, if we select this beam, which is supported at both the ends, but it is also continuous at the both the ends. So this type of beam now is called as the both in continuous beam. And if this is the length of the beam, so its minimum height or the minimum depth of this beam is equal to the L by 21. So dividing the L by 21, we will get the minimum requirement for such type of minimum requirement for the depth 
for such type of beam which is both ended continuous. So these are the requirements for the minimum depth and our assumed depth should always be greater than these minimum depth. Just remember these values and for the different types of the beam. You cannot replace these formulas with the other type, with other formulas is these are the according to the ACI codes. If you use the engine codes or the other codes then these formulas might change. So these formulas are according to the ACI. Hope you guys understand the minimum depth of the beam and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.